So welcome back to this CUBE special presentation here on the 62nd floor in the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas for Google Cloud Next. I'm John Furrier, your host of the CUBE. We're here with a program accelerating innovation with Persistent. We've got two great guests here. I do Jack Gerhar, who's the Vice President Cloud Technology Product at Deep Health. Thanks for coming on, appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, Kamal, Kamal Puri, Cloud, runs Google Cloud at Persistent. You're an AVP. Thank you, John. Thanks for coming on. So this is a, a customer segment. Deep Health, you got the keys to the kingdom. You got the cloud, you got the product and technology. You got a lot of responsibility. Um, we're here at Google Cloud and the announcements are pretty impressive. It's for major change over to this transformation with the cloud. It's a huge opportunity. You guys are in the middle of it. Take a minute to explain what you guys do and then we'll get into the use case. Yeah. I think so, you know, before let's say we get into the tech technology aspects, I want to give a little bit of uh, insight into what we do at Deep Health. Uh, Deep Health is a fully owned subsidiary of a company, uh, Radnet. So I think so, Radnet, maybe a lot of people are aware of what it is, but still you know, I would like to take a couple of seconds. Radnet is the, one of the largest diagnostic imaging chain in, in the United States. Um, and we do over 10 million uh, scans. Um, you know, across the United States. Um, and you know, one of the you know, vision from our CEO, Dr. Berger, was uh, how can we make the you know, healthcare accessible to people and also use technology as a means to drive you know, health and wellness uh, you know, across the populations what we see. Um, and principally we are focused on imaging, uh, but also we work with a lot of uh, hospitals where we do JV with them to run their imaging business. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, like say, we are like a co-partners mm -hmm. with them yeah. uh, in the industry. But in a sense, the Radnet, right you know, sole focus is imaging as a core part, and the deep health um, is, is a technology arm of Radnet, uh, what we call informatics business. So I think so, you know, a few years back, Dr. Berger had this vision saying that we need to control our destiny in technology to mm -hmm. drive uh, and value to our customers. So. Uh, we had a lot of informatics assets what we acquired. We acquired uh, PAX assets, we acquired um, our you know, the radiology information system, which is an EMR essentially for uh, radiology business. Uh, and also we had acquired a few AI assets uh, in the area of uh, MAMO, mm -hmm. area of lung, and then prostate cancer, right? So these were all the assets within the right name. But you know, uh, our CEO, Dr. Berger, saw that division where if let's say technology could be an arm, which is actually helping our core business, which is imaging, which we can actually add more value to our customers and also improve care to patients. So recently, like say, um, you know, uh, a year back, mm -hmm. uh, they had this vision of creating an informatics uh, arm of Radnet. So now essentially, I think so, a couple of months back, mm -hmm. we announced to our public market that um, Deep Health would be a uh, fully separate business unit, uh, having separate P&L. Mm -hmm. So Deep Health is actually an informatics business uh, where the focus is to bring in uh, a lot of value to our customers uh, in the area of, like, say, uh, uh, cancer screening, precision mm -hmm. medicine, uh, diagnostics, uh, and also overall healthcare. So that's kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know what we do at Deep Health. So do you see a lot of images? So images is a big part of the multimodal AI models. Um, I'm connecting the dots here in real time. I'm almost imagining that there's real efficiencies in there. Can you explain some of the things that's going on at, as AI comes in? What are some of those efficiencies? Obviously, going through all the data, scans, which is images. AI is helping there, I'm assuming. Can you give, an ex can you take, give a little bit of color commentary on some of the things you guys are doing that, that drives that value? Yeah, so I think so. I'll you know, talk about four trends that's happening. And one is efficiency, the other one, what we're looking at is, how can we improve patient lives? That's mm -hmm. the biggest part of our vision, and what's our you know, vision from our doctor, CEO, Dr. Berger, or you know, our, our CEO, CTO, Sham Soka, right? Uh, is that how can we improve lives of our patients? Now, in terms of how AI is helping us, so if you look at uh, our population, mm -hmm. there are four major trends what we see in the industry. One is the uh, MAMO, um, cancer, mm -hmm. or breast cancer, what we call. Uh, second is the prostate cancer. Uh, third one is lung cancer. Now you see you know, a lot of people smoking, and now we are vaping and all of that. We see there's a big trend in the industry where people have a lot of lung cancer. Um, and then the, the uh, uh, 
you know, you have the brain uh, degenerative diseases that are also kind of uh, uh, you know, being there. So in these areas, we actually have a lot of AI assets. And a lot of them were built on you know, cloud-native Google, right? So I'll take in point in case in terms of the you know, breast cancer. So we have a product called um, uh, the Deep Health, and now we call it Sage Breast. So ideally what it does is it actually uh, gives you a scoring of the potential likelihood that the, that the patient might have uh, actually malignant tumor or not. Uh, and, and today, uh, with the lack of, let's say, uh, radiology in the industry, uh, a general radiologist can use this AI and actually read it as good as a, you know, an expert radiologist in mammal. Now what we're doing is, this is the efficiency, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm taking a general radiologist, I'm making it as much efficient as a yeah. radiologist trained in mammal. Huge efficiency because otherwise, very, very few people, a one, general radiologist wants to read mammal because it's very complex yeah. in itself. So there we are it's kind of an art to it too, if you want the experts know what to look for in the data that a general person might not know. Yes, So the correct. screening is just, you're creating essentially the ability to yeah, we are assisting a radiologist yeah. to become much more efficient like an expert radiologist. That's one part of efficiency. The second part is we are actually removing uh, large, see, when radiologists read it, they're seeing a lot of blacks. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities where they might miss something. Mm -hmm. The AI comes in handy there, but it actually can help you uh, to not miss anything yeah. which can cause harm to patients. Um, in fact, we have a study, you know, uh, probably we can, uh, we can share a, share a mm -hmm. link, but there are a lot of studies on how we are improving uh, the breast cancer screening uh, and efficiency of it and effectiveness of it in the industry. And probably we are the largest, by the way, in the United States uh, to do the you know, breast cancer screening. I love how AI pulls forward these benefits, just saving lives, identifying screening early, early detection. I mean, this is exactly what we want, <laughs> a, pull, a pull forward, but, but it's not going to go away. So, like other examples. So what, one, you know, one you know, important distinction between us and probably the rest of the AI uh, uh, players in the market so is, is the following, right? So a lot of, there are a lot of AI companies building a lot of AI algorithms, but what probably they miss the mark is AI should solve end-to-end -end workflow problem in healthcare, not just give you algorithm. Because if I go and look at the uh, mammal or breast cancer mm -hmm. algorithm, you, find, you might find a dozen of them in the industry. But what RedNet has done is mm -hmm. taken this algorithm built in-house with our experts mm -hmm. and actually have made what we call a flagship program today called Enhanced mm -hmm. Breast Cancer Detection. It's actually the flagship program uh, where you can do, by the way, now in Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. You go to Walmart, uh, you can go and get the screening done for $40. Yeah. So, yeah. But we control end-to-end, -end, by the way. We enroll patients. We, you know, have them come and get scanned or screened for cancer. We then use AI now to basically mm -hmm. make sure that you know we are detecting you know the, the the right outcomes, and then we are actually also tracking patients when they come back. So it's an end-to-end -end program. It's yeah, just yeah. AI is a part of it, but ideally this is what customers are looking at of how AI is able to drive end-to-end -end outcome to our customers. That also adds to a lot of value into how patients are taking advantage of these solutions yeah. and making it really cost effective, right? So that expands the reach that patients can have and get those. I think, I think that point is huge and I think it's a great call out because this gets back down to um, the cloud side of it and the data center because, okay, great, you get the screen and it's a point solution in the workflow. What at GDC, at NVIDIA's conference we were there, one thing that became clear to the world at that point is that if you have the horsepower and then you have all this resource, call it cloud, you now can then bring workflows and data to that workflow end to end and do all kinds of things, build a custom, maybe even custom silicon, because yes. maybe you have images that require a certain kind of SLA for compute and, and horsepower. So you're starting to see this end to end workflow not be a one off, but a Correct. standard yes. in AI. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and also the other case, you know, uh, also I'll tell you in terms of uh, a real practical use case of how Google, you know, assets are actually very pivotal in, in this transformation. So if you take a RadNet or our Deep Health, you know, as an informatics arm, so we have a lot of our assets in the data center, right? Um, and you know, moving all of these images to the cloud, you know, is is a is a, is, a, is, a, is an exercise that we have to do. Now, 
But in terms of the business in our, in our outcomes, we have to do it immediately. So what it means is that if I have to run my business operation with this concept, what, what I just said for the screening, we might not have an opportunity like to do more all the data to the cloud first and then you do all of this, right? It is about how you connect cloud and on-prem together so that we can drive an outcome as we transform to cloud. It's not like uh, uh, I want to go to cloud and then transform. It's about you know how I can transform to go to cloud but still be on-prem. Yeah. So Google has lots of like say assets like you know Google Anthos mm -hmm. or uh, other assets through which I can connect both on-prem and cloud and skills still can drive the efficiencies. Because especially for, uh, let's say, mammal cancer screening, what you do is you take a current image, also you can look at the five prior images. At least in Dragon, that's what we do. So let's say if I today go to cloud, I want to get my five priors, they're on-prem. Now if the expectation is that I want to move mm -hmm. all those images to cloud, it might be a yeah. not practical thing. But Google now provides ability using you know, Google uh, uh, you know, Kubernetes Enterprise Edition mm -hmm. to basically connect on-prem Kubernetes <laughs> and uh, cloud Kubernetes, and then drive the same outcome regardless yeah. of where the data is, which is kind of a so nice. So got the hybrid and multi-cloud, yeah. correct? And as a key point, but I got to ask about DevSecOps. So SecOps security, obviously, sec confidential. I mean, yes. healthcare, you yes. got to maintain security. Can you talk about the um, the DevSecOps automation piece of this? How does that work? What's Google? Uh, Google bringing anything to the table there? So I think so. You know, maybe come on, you know, can add to it. But I'll tell you the importance of cybersecurity, right? I think so, recently in our industry we have seen a few incidents, mm -hmm. um, because of which, in fact, a uh, lot of insurance claims were held up <laughs> because of the recent incident that happened in the healthcare. So, uh, and also, especially in the healthcare segment, where the customer is still transforming, the talent to secure infrastructure assets is probably one of the most challenging feat. They're probably afraid of ransomware too. I mean, yep. tons of ransomware Correct. attacks. Correct. So you know, cybersecurity on cloud is an essential component of how we can succeed in cloud, right? And Kamal can add in terms of the assets what we're using yep. in Google Cloud. And but but we are working with our ISVs to actually transform that as well. And uh, the same same apply, thing applies here, right? So we want to not just take security for one cloud. We want to expand it to mm -hmm. all the clouds that we are operating in. Take the best best of the breed, whether it is a model from working on Azure or Google Cloud or, or on-prem on a, on a data center. We want to have a same security posture across the board, making sure all of our healthcare data, all PHIs is safeguarded, and we are compliant with all the and you're products. And Google does a good job on that. Google has uh, great products, which is yeah. now expanding to all the clouds. Yeah. And you got all the announcements here. Google Next, obviously, going to be more generally <laughs> I embedded in. All right, cool. So I want to get into the uh, deep health. Um, fascinated by the innovation strategy you just laid out. That's really compelling. You got a cloud native environment. Okay, you mentioned Kubernetes. We'll have Hen uh, Goldberg on the cube tomorrow. You have this clinical AI operating model. Can you explain how that's working and where you're going to take it? Yeah, th yeah. So I think so. Maybe uh, and, uh, maybe I'll set to the base for it and yeah. before I go to clinical AI. So what we are doing in Deep Health, we're building what we call uh, an operating system for radiology. We call it Deep Health OS. Um, essentially, what it is is a uh, platform or an ecosystem uh, through which uh, we are able to like to drive uh, some of the like say efficiency to all of our like say end user base. For example, today uh, take an example of radiologist. Radiology uses uh, viewers, they use packs, they use different tools to actually read a particular image. And actually, these are uh, sold by multiple vendors, by the way. Viewer is by different vendor, mm -hmm. uh, advanced imaging is by different vendor, packs is by different vendor, AI is from different vendor. I mean, if you name it, a radiologist uses five or six different vendors to actually read a particular mm -hmm. image to get to mm -hmm. an outcome, clinical outcome. Now, same with the technologist who actually scans you. He uses another, like, say, dozen tools mm -hmm. to actually scan a patient. Now, you have a front desk who also has a dozen technologies mm -hmm. to actually schedule a patient. <laughs> and same thing you know, yeah, after the yeah. you know, uh, you know, patient goes These through. silos okay. are just ridiculous. So, so what we're doing here is that we are saying that, uh, hey, customers and users, we at Deep Health, we want to transform that particular, like, say, uh, area. Where we are saying that you don't need 20 different tools will give you one backbone on which you'll get one user experience to be able to drive an outcome. For a radiologist, he will have access to all of his AI, all of his viewer, all of the advanced imaging, all of the work list under one platform called Diagnostic Workspace, which is built on top of this Deep Health OS. 
Same thing with for technologies yeah. who's scanning patient. You want remote connectivity. You want to scan a patient effectively. Yeah. You want to like say make sure that the patient uh, is, um, you know, uh, patient engagement is there for him. It comes all under one platform called technology workspace, right? So all cloud based. All fully cloud, cloud based. based. And I, you know, cloud-based, but of course we work yeah. in hybrid yeah. because of the transition. Because the workflows are there, the machines are Perfect. at the edge. <laughs> so the way we're doing it is we're actually using Anthos as a means to connect the on prem yeah. uh, and then we're using you know, GraphQL as one of the technology engine mm -hmm. to API our on-prem, like say, database. Mm -hmm. And I'm connecting and building a new workflows now without actually migrating stuff to cloud yet. But mm -hmm. eventually- they What are you using on-premise, Graph what? So GraphQL. GraphQL, yeah, so GraphQL it's lightweight, yes. high performance, Works yeah. well with the cloud. Exactly. Yeah. Good edge <laughs> yes. use case here. Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 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 the Deep Health OS essentially is like say an ecosystem on which we are building all of the workspaces to drive now uh, radiologist efficiency, uh, clinical outcome for radiologists, uh, efficiency for technologists, and also for front desk, contact center, and all of that. So ideally, this becomes a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. for entire radiology business. How, what's the ease of use on their side? Give me a taste of what's, what it's like on their side. What's changed now? Sounds like the back end's nice. Congratulations, good job, guys. Now, the user, they got a device, they got patients coming in, they're probably concerned, they want to make sure that they get detection, if there's okay, a I'll cancer. Give a, I'll give you a specific use case. So, for example, let's assume that you go in um, for, for stomach pain. So, a technologist is, is, is uh, scanning you, and you find something which is uh, not normal, right? So mm -hmm. typically what happens is when you are getting scanned, you basically have to get what we call uh, uh, order from a physician, uh, and it has a set of protocols that you need to use to scan a patient. But now a technologist has found something which is, uh, uh, he, he, he feels that it's not normal. So you need to now call up a radiologist to say that, hey, you want to add even more sequences to it so that I can get a better shot, a better image of the patient. So typically in this scenario, let's say uh, uh, pre-OS, what we're building, uh, it just will literally, you know, they have to make a call to support, they call radiologists, radiologist then doesn't know what is happening. He might, if they can get a hold of them. Exactly. exactly. Then one. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then if they are basically on-site radiologists within the hospital, then they can come in and look at it. But, but, but that is basically lots yeah. of moving around things. Now take a look, let's look at OS, how we can solve it. Let's assume a technologist is basically uh, find this something which is, you know, he doesn't feel something is right. He can uh, click a phone button. Uh, I need to actually give you a first available radiologist. He can click a button. He can call radiologist. Uh, radiologist will pick up a call. A green, yellow indicators are there for him to know they are there or not. And then radiologist, when he calls the technologist, he can remotely see entire scanning process that is happening with the full view of patient. And the previous scans. Yes, all scans. of them all the yeah. in one click, by the way. Yeah, so, so he's instantly up to speed. He's a, you get real-time response. Yep. And no recalls, no repeats, because imagine this, you have to send a patient back, yeah. and can bring him back again to scan it. So it's the user experience is phenomenal. More than user experience, the patient engagement. Patient experience. What happens to patient that, you know, he's fully taken care on the table. Not something that he goes yeah. back home and comes back. Or go out, wait, wait, go drive back, get another picture. Yes, exactly. All the exactly. cycle times involved, the waste and cost too on the on the on the on the facility. Yes. All right. So now all the scans go into the cloud. Yes. Yes. And that's where everything happens. Great. So you got a great solution. Yeah, and, and the user experience yeah. is the same across the product. Take. A, Why isn't everyone doing this? Yeah. The the reason is because like, say, <laughs> there, there are bureaucracy. No, it's a it's a it's a good question. It, uh, I mean, uh, there are you know startups like we feel that we are startup. Startups are the one who have the DNA to basically go and say this is not how I look at it. This is how you change your perspective. Mm -hmm. And we are, I think so, uh, the trailblazers on building one stack for yeah. the entire radiology. That's why we call uh, Deep Health as a radiology operating system. Yeah. So I think that a lot of this to your point, by the way, just for the, for our other conversation, the end-to-end -end workloads play in here. You because you look at it as an end-to-end -end workload, you can yep. innovate the entire process yes. and make those claims and deliver them. And on top of it, it's just not a technology play. RedNet runs imaging business. Yeah. Imagine now I can bring in service capability to deliver that. For example, if I would uh, yeah. today go to, let's say, an imaging you know, mm -hmm. chain, which is beyond RedNet, and say I can offer you MAMO screening, turnkey, yeah. with technology, with people, with services, with clinical discipline. They'll love it. Yeah, I mean, lock-in is not about bad for the customer because the lock-in is a success 
because it's so good yes. that the, the switching cost, why would I switch to a, a, be, a worse solution? Correct. And, you, and there's more images, and that's the business they're in. It's a very it's sticky a, solution. Yeah, and it's a, it will be turnkey in the sense that uh, you know, you, if you want to buy a certain specific piece of the product, you can buy it. Now you can upgrade your subscription to an, you know, other mm -hmm. part of the products. So we sell different offerings, yeah. but ideally, uh, you know, if people can upgrade whenever they want, at their like, yeah. because it's cloud native, it becomes easier for them to do it. And because we are touching almost all part of patient interaction, yeah. the whole modern end-to-end -end modernization becomes really key, whether it is on the web, on the phone, everything is, in a single platform, a turnkey solution. Paul, this is a great example of how you guys are adding value yeah. and how innovators can innovate with Google Cloud. Quickly, before we end the segment, talk about the Google relationship with persistence. This is the kind of transformation and change management and innovation strategy, frankly, that, that people are looking at. Complete rethinking of how they approach the market, end-to-end, -end, data, workflows intellectual property, their business model advancements as well. So, I mean, across the board innovation. This is all enabled by what you guys do with Google. Take a minute to explain the relationship. Yeah, so for Google and even for the other Google um, cloud providers, whether it is Microsoft or AWS, we have deep partnership with all of them, uh, working directly with their product owners. We know what products are coming up down the line for 2024, 2025. Uh, how does that impact our, our customers and how can we bring all of that to the mm -hmm. table as a turnkey solution to accelerate the transformation that our customers are thinking about and that's what we're do, doing here with Deepak. Awesome. Madhu, congratulations on a great product and operating system and solution. Uh, it's changing lives, certainly. It's a game changer and people, you know, they get one early detection, you know, I, like you, know, you bring expertise down to the democratized level, we walk into Walmart, okay, it's turnkey, Next thing you know, you got results. If you don't have that, you have to then come in, you got to get your health. I mean, just so much benefit uh, yeah, to society. I would say, I would say uh, this was a vision of our, let's say, CEO, Dr. Berger, Howard Berger, mm -hmm. and also our you know, vision of our you know, CEO and CTO, Sham Soka. I think so they, you know, they put up this vision of let's simplify things for our end yeah. users, of yeah. our, let's say, customers, of our operators. And let's take care of these things for them where yeah. they can focus on improving patient life. And then we are here with partners and yeah. Google to kind of uh, innovate and bring the value to our customers. That's good business. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> good job, guys. Madhu, thanks so much. Kamal, thanks Thank for coming you. on. Thank you. Thank you. You're watching theCUBE here. Special presentation. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.